Hi, everybody, and welcome to Making the Most of TechSoup.org. Just a couple of things about using ReadyTalk, which is the webinar platform that we're using today. Um, just so you know, your audio, you should be hearing me through your computers, mic, and speakers. If you would rather call in, um, let us know, and in, in a couple of minutes I can give you an 800 number that you can call. Um, if you are having a lot of problems with um, hearing us, or you just are a little bit confused about using ReadyTalk or how to switch um, to the other audio, you can talk. You can call the ReadyTalk support line, which the number is right there. If you lose your Internet connection at any time, you can just reconnect using the link that was emailed to you, so the same way that you entered just a couple of minutes ago. And the same way if you do end up calling in and you lose your phone connection, you can redial that same phone number. And just to remind you, we are going to be recording today's session. And this session will be available on the TechSoup website as well as the TechSoup YouTube page um, under a Creative Commons license. And you will receive a link to the recording, the presentation, and any additional materials or links um, later today. And if you really want to talk about this on Twitter, you can use the hashtag TechSoup. So again, we're at making the most at TechSoup.org. And my name is Kyla Hunt. I'm going to be the facilitator today. I'm the webinar program manager here at TechSoup. With us today is Laura Franklin and Shala Harris. And they're both going to be talking about TechSoup. Um, and assisting with chat today is going to be Kevin Lowe, so you might see his name pop up in the chat. And I do hear, I do see something in the chat that some people are hearing an echo. Um, does everybody, does anybody else other than the one person who said that hear any kind of echo right now? Okay, and I'm seeing, okay, great. And I'm seeing some things that either they're not or, or yes, a little. Um, most of the people are saying no echo. So that's good. Um, if you do hear an echo, I would recommend that you just make sure that there are no additional audio um, um, applications open on your computer. Or I will share the 800 number if you want to try to call that call into that as well. So just a little bit about what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk a little bit about who TechSoup is um, and about the website and the different features that are available there. We're going to be talking about the product donation programs and eligibility. We're also going to talk a little bit about updating your account. And of course, we're going to be handling some questions from the, from the audience. And you, will, you are all going to be muted today. Um, the chat questions that you chat in, Unfortunately, I'm the only one who can see them, or the people on the back end are the only one who can see them, but we will, will be reading them out loud during the questions break. So you should be able to um, gather all of that information, and so everybody should be able to benefit from the questions that are going to be answered. So just to start out, a little bit about who TechSoup is. We're a 501c3 nonprofit, nonprofit organization, just like so many of you out there. And our main mission is to make sure that everybody has the technology and technology resources to best help you fulfill your organization's mission. And so with that, I do want to go ahead and hand it over to Laura, who will be able to talk a little bit about, about TechSoup.org. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hope you are all doing well on this Thursday morning or for some of you afternoon, I guess, if you're joining us from the East Coast. Um, I wanted to first start off by sharing a little bit about our TechSoup.org homepage. Um, to take off from what Kyla just said, you can learn more about us by clicking on the About Us link at the top of our page. So this is the front door of TechSoup.org. It is really the entry point, and you can access all of our learning resources, our community, and our product donation programs from this page, as one would imagine. Um, and 
as Kyla said, TechSoup.org is really geared towards providing a variety of resources to nonprofits and libraries. A lot of people only know about our product donation program, so I wanted to start off today by going through our learning center and community. Um, um, our articles and how to um, are accessible through the Learning Center link on the left side of our homepage. Um, you can also get to all of our archived, web sorry, archived webinars through this channel. I'll walk you through that in just a second. So clicking on the Learning Center takes you to a page that looks a little bit different than our home page. We're in the middle of a website redesign. Um, so hopefully in another few months, uh, these will look closer to how our home page looks. Our um, articles are accessible from the left-hand side. Um, you can search by topic, and you can also see here the latest articles that have been posted. We have hundreds and hundreds of articles available, um, a lot on products, specifically Microsoft, or how to use some products that are available through our donation programs. And you can also access upcoming webinars like the one you're currently attending. Um, you can uh, also look at more than 80 archived webinars. Um, topics really range from things like how to use TechSoup or how to use the Microsoft donation program to um, you know, mapping and uh, using the Microsoft donation program. Um, and now if we go back to our home page, see we also have this box called the know-how section. Um, as one would imagine, it links to learning resources and articles. Often we feature our latest blog posts and um, latest articles in this box. So. You can find more webinars here through the Learning Center link and through the KnowHow box. You can also use the Search Our Site feature at the very top of the web page to um, find articles on topics that you're interested in. So if you wanted to see all the articles um, and resources we have available on Microsoft, you would just search Microsoft there, and of course the search results would show up those articles and, and information resources. Next we have uh, our community forum and blog. This section of our site um, is really geared towards making the most of the nonprofit community that we have on TechSoup. To participate in these resources, you need to first register yourself as an individual on TechSoup. Then you can participate and comment in the blogs and also ask questions and give answers in our forums. So if we go to the blog, you can see a lot of the latest tech news that we're talking about here. You can also learn about the uh, happenings, the new product donations available on TechSoup, and um, participate in conversations on the latest nonprofit tech news. Clicking on the Forums tab takes you to our forums. Um, we have established different forums, including one that I really want to draw your attention to, the TechSoup Help Forum. Um, all of our forums are monitored uh, by hosts and stars, some experts, um, like our security forum is monitored by a um, expert on security from Symantec. So you can ask your questions here, and either a TechSoup staff member or a forum host or someone from the nonprofit community will answer your questions. Um, in the TechSoup Help Forum, sometimes if you don't need an answer right away, it's a great way to get help from our client services department on you know, order questions or just questions about how to use TechSoup overall. Our community can also be accessed through the box on our home page that's titled Community it highlights some recent forum discussions and, um, and uh, conversations that have a lot of activity. So our product donation programs, which 
you know, is what most of you are probably here to learn more about today, are available in 40 different countries, um, including the United States. To find all of the countries that we have donation programs in, there is a drop-down menu on our home page. So if you have uh, partners in other countries or um, know of any friends that have nonprofits or relationships like that in other countries, let them know, um, and they can get Microsoft donations um, through our partner pr programs in those other countries. So getting started with the product donation program. Um, most of you may have gone through this process already, but I really want to highlight it so that everybody understands the user flow. First, you need to join TechSoup as an individual. Um, that's very basic registration. It is just your name and email address. Once you complete this step, you can participate in the forum discussions and also comment on our blog posts. Then from there, you either register your organization or associate to an existing organization. To register your organization, um, we require your EIN number or if you're a library, your FSCS ID number. Um, you need to know your organization's type and also your annual budget. To associate to an existing organization, you need to speak to someone at your organization who is already registered with TechSoup and enter an association code. As part of the registration process, we do take you through um, finding if your organization is already registered, and that's based on your organization um, ID number, EIN number. Once you complete registration, you need to send qualification documents to TechSoup. We verify then that you're the organization you say you are. Um, we check your website and um, make sure that your org type matches up with what you entered on our site. And then you can request product donations. Um, this process needs to be completed before you can receive product donations through TechSoup. So the basics of the program. TechSoup works with more than 50 donor partners um, to make more than 400 product donations available to 501c3 nonprofits and libraries. Each one of those donor partners sets its own eligibility rules and restrictions. So the Adobe donation program has different rules and limits than the Microsoft donation program. And it's a little bit complicated to keep all of these straight, but we make it easy. I'll take you through that in just a minute. Um, so eligibility rules and limitations are based on your organization's type and budget. So if you're a youth organization like a YMCA, you're eligible for different donation programs than environmental organizations. Um, and also your annual budget. A lot of our donation programs are geared towards smaller or smaller organizations with lower budgets. But we do have donation programs available for all ranges of budgets and all org types. Another restriction is TechSoup's fiscal year. If you've been signed up with TechSoup for any length of time, you probably got uh, messages from us in the last month talking about our fiscal year end, which just happened on June 30th. Our fiscal year runs from July 1st to June 30th. And an example of a program that runs on our fiscal year cycle is Intuit. You, if you're eligible for Intuit, you can receive one QuickBooks donation per fiscal year. So if you requested QuickBooks today, you could place another request for another QuickBooks version on July 1st of next year, 2013. Um, one other type of program that we have is a cycle. Uh, Microsoft is the biggest donation program that runs on a cycle. It's a two-year cycle, and Shala will be talking a little bit about that later. Um, so basically, as long as your organization is eligible for the programs and hasn't met your yearly or cycle limit, you can request products from any program at any time. So if you're doing your tech planning and you decide you want a fluid survey donation, Microsoft, Blackboard, Adobe, Symantec, Volunteer Matters, you can request all of the donations at once. You don't have to go through the process um, once for each donation program. You can add them to your cart and complete checkout all in one spell swoop. A great tool for organizations looking to see what product donations are available to them is the Check Eligibility Quiz. It's on our website um, on every page in the left-hand column. Um, 
And I'm going to walk you through this quiz real quick. If you're already logged in, we already have your registration information in the system. So the quiz automatically populates and shows you the donation programs you're eligible for. But if you're not logged in, you can select the information for your organization. So I am in California, and I'll be a youth activities organization. Um, let's just say I'm a YMCA, and my org budget is 50000 Click Check Eligibility. And you see a list of all the programs that your organization is eligible for. To browse the products, just simply click on the link to the program. And you can browse the products and see which ones are good fits for your organization. I think we're going to take a quick break for questions, if there are any, and then Shala will um, answer or take you through more about the product donation program. Sure. So looking at the questions that have come in so far, um, we did have a question about just um, if, they have, if somebody has issues with the eligibility process, who, who would they talk to if there's any contact information of who they would contact at that point? And I believe Shala is going to talk about that a little bit, but I don't know if you want to say anything more about that, Laura. Really for eligibility questions, we do have some help resources on the site, um, including blog posts that we'll be sending out after the webinar. Um, but your best bet is to contact Client Services Department and try to ask the questions that way and get the issues straightened out. Okay, awesome. Great, thanks. And it looks like that's really the only question that's come in so far. So if, um, oh, I just got another one. Um, if part of a larger organization, so for example a college library, do you request through the library or through the major institution? And we are <laughs> talking about it right now. Okay. <laughs> Um, there is a, if you visit the FAQ on our site, um, there is a more detailed answer than this. But if you are a branch of a larger organization, you are eligible to request product donations for that branch. So I, I, I'm not sure, Shala, if you are going to go through that, but um, the answer to that is definitely in our FAQs. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, and we also had a question asking if donations are available for QuickBooks for Macs. Yes, unfortunately we are out of stock on that right now, but we do expect it to come back in stock in the next couple of weeks. Okay, great. And just one more before we really hand it over to Shala, and this is going to kind of lead into her, her presentation. Um, there was a question asking if there are any special restrictions for religious organizations, and I believe she's going to talk a little bit about special donation programs and, and things like that. But I don't know if you want to say anything to that right now, Shala? Um, yes, there are special restrictions for faith-based and religious organizations, and I will cover that information shortly. Okay. Great, thank you. And um, so there are some more questions that have come in, but I do want to make sure that Shala has enough time to do her portion of the presentation. So any of the questions that have just come in, we will be noting them and we will handle them near the end of the presentation. So never fear, we will get your questions answered. And with that, Shala, you want to go ahead? Hi, I'm Shala, and I am going to go over um, some of the um, website navigation tips and also um, some frequently asked questions that um, client services get. Bear with me just a moment. Okay, so when you're logged into your TechSoup account, this is the page that is going to come up. Um, many people think that Search Our Site is the best way to search for products. Um, it's not necessarily the best way on our site. I'll um, show you why right now. So if you type in webinar and search webinar in the box, 
If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, ReadyTalk, which is what we are using right now, doesn't come up, and it is one of the products that we um, offer. So that is why it is not necessarily the best way to search. You are not necessarily going to see the product that you are looking for when you search for a key term. Um, the best thing for you to do is at the top of the page under Get Started, click Get Products. So if you click Get Products, this is really going to open up the site um, for purchasing products for your organization. So on the right-hand side of the page, there are drop-downs. You can either search by partner, or you can browse by task. So if we do browse by task, for example, you can – let's do Manage Finances, and then Manage Money. In this way you'll be able to compare products. So if you come to our site and know that you're looking for something in specific, but you don't have any donor partners in mind or software programs that you know that you want to use, you can come to the Browse by Task section to compare products. If we go back to the home page just by clicking TechSoup.org in the top left-hand corner, you can also – let's actually click Get Products again to get back to the main shopping page. Then you can also scroll down and browse by partner. So I will go to Microsoft because that is probably the most popular product and the first thing most organizations want when they come to TechSoup. So if you go to Microsoft Desktop Application Software, this is where you will find Microsoft Office products. If you click Office Suites, this is where you will get a list of all the Office Suites that TechSoup offers. We have Office 2007 and also Office, Office 2010. So let's click Office Professional Plus 2010. At the top of each product page, you'll see pricing information, the product ID, and then the installation format as well. This product is um, download, but you can also get DVD um, by request. Um, so the product ID, this is the – if you're searching our site up in the Search Our Site box, um, you definitely want to have the product ID number, and then you'll be, able to, you'll be brought right to the product page. Um, next section, we have the description of each product. In the description section, you'll find notable product features, licensing information, fulfillment details, and technical support um, information if it's offered. Some of our donor partners provide some free technical support, or your product will come with maybe 30 days of technical support. That information will be listed in the description section. If you scroll down on any product page, you'll also see related um, products and information. So you'll see the different versions of the product. You'll see any related articles and information. If you keep scrolling down, you'll see system requirements. Before purchasing a product, you always want to be sure that your computer, your computer will be compatible with the product that you would like. Finally, if you scroll down, you'll see the Rules, Eligibility, and Restrictions section. And um, while I went over this before, um, every organization – each of our donor partners has restrictions set up based on your organization's mission statement and budget. So down here, you'll find the organization's budget – or the donor partner's budget restriction, any um, – any mission statement, any mission restrictions, and you also find the program allotment. Microsoft runs on a two-year cycle, and that information is listed here. So another popular product that we – a donor partner that we have is Adobe. So if you go to the Browse by Partner section and click Adobe, you'll be brought to the main Adobe program page. I'm showing you Adobe because um, the Adobe Special Donation Program is the program that most organizations will want to use. The Adobe Special Donation Program is the non-current version of, versions of Adobe products. So currently Adobe has six – um, Creative Suite 6.0 on the market. Um, in the special donation pro program, you'll see the Creative Suite 5.5, 5.0, and previous versions. So if you're trying to quest, request Adobe products and you're not eligible for the current products, always try the special donation program and you'll probably make it through the restrictions check while, while you're checking out. If you go back, scroll up to the top of the page and click 
um, click Get Products again, it will bring you back to the main page. And I just wanted to go over a few of the special programs. So on the right-hand side of the page is where our special programs are listed. We have the Refurbished Computer Initiative. This is where you'll want to go if you're looking for hardware. If you need computers, monitors, servers, printers, this is where you'll, you will find the Refurbished Computers. Um, any questions that you have about libraries, you can, click product, you can click Products for Libraries, and you'll find library information. Faith-based organizations bring you to the faith-based page. I know there was a question about that earlier, and this is where you will find um, all the product offerings that we have for religious and faith-based organizations. Also, if you do have any secular community outreach programs, your services are available to anyone within your community, then you can fill out a secular clarification survey and submit the final, that final qualification document to the client services department. And we can do a further review of your organization's eligibility for TechSoup products. Also, we have TechSoup Limited. This is where you're going to find products that are even more discounted than what we normally offer. Also, if you, you, you can find bundle packages um, for semantic products. You can find older versions of products. Um, if you don't necessarily need the newest version, you can click TechSoup Limited and try to find last year's version for cheaper. So another thing that's important to know about our website is Manage My Account. You can either click My Account at the top of the page, or you can click Go to Manage My Account on the left-hand side of the page. So if you click Edit Organization Profile, this is – let me sign in again. Sorry about that. So this is where you will find all the information about your organization. Um, this is all the information that you set up during the registration and join TechSoup process. Um, so at the very top of the page, um, you can click Donation Request History and Status. Um, that is where you can get print out invoices of your past donation requests. If you are being linked to an existing account, you can see what your organization has requested in the past. Also, if your donation request has not processed yet and you would like to modify your request, then you can cancel your request in the Donation Request History Status section. Um, there will just be a button that says Cancel right next to your donation request. So if you go back one page on the Manage My Account Profile, my, Manage My Profile section, you'll see the Member Profile, which is where you can change your login information, and also your organization profile. This is where your federal tax ID number is listed, or your FSCS ID if you are a library. Also, your organization's association code, which is needed if anyone else from your organization would like to place donation requests. Um, and then finally, if you, your organization moves, the, um, the contact email address changes. This is where you will change that information. It, <clears throat> in order to um, – if you don't want your shipments to be delayed, and you, not and you're, if you notice the contact information isn't valid, then you definitely want to change your address prior to placing your donation request to avoid any delays. Um, to speed this up, you can always contact customer service or the client services department, or you can email us and we can assist you with um, making that happen sooner than um, what is noted on our website, which is three weeks. So finally, if you go back to click Get Products again, just wanted to point out that under the Help section, there um, is an FAQ page. So most of the common questions that um, come up during phone calls with um, organizations are answered in the FAQ section such as return policy, um, hours of operation, um, our contact information. So all of that can be found in the FAQ section. 
Um, also, if you ever need to contact client services and you aren't able to call in, you can go to the Need More Help section and email us. It takes us usually, um, we usually respond within 24 hours to your um, question. So if it's not urgent, I would definitely encourage you to email us if you aren't able to find the answer on our website. And um, that's basically um, all I had to say today. Um, these are the main, um, the main topics that people call in about to, um, when they are new to TechSoup. So I hope I answered some of your questions. Okay, great. Thank you, Shala. And we do have um, several questions that have come in. So let me, let's go ahead and take a look at those. I'm going to go ahead and bring this last slide up. All right. All right, so we do have a question um, saying, just wanting to reiterate kind of what the turnaround time is for sending in the documentation for their nonprofit. Somebody said that they sent in their documentation, but they haven't heard if they're official yet. Um, and I'm not sure if, Shala, you want to answer that question? Sure. So um, if you just fax, or fax in your um, qualification documents or requalification documents, it can take up to three weeks to process. I think that's what's noted on our website. Um, the best way to speed that up is just to call into client services or email us, and we can do that um, on the spot basically. Um, if you are updating your organization's address and the, address, the new address is on your organization's website, then we can just use that to verify the new address when you call. Um, if you are using a home address for shipping, then you will actually need to send in a letter um, to us. But as long as you reach out to us when, you, um, when we send you an email for the request, the email will go right back to the person's inbox that you we're speaking with on the phone. Um, so usually the turnaround time is just a day or two instead of three weeks. So definitely reaching out to us is the fastest way to get your organization requalified. Okay, great. And we have had several questions just wanting to know what um, exactly the admin fee is. And um, we did have another question that kind of relates to that, asking do these products actually cost money or are they not free? So Laura, do you want to take that one? Sure. So TechSoup does charge a very small admin fee. It's a small uh, percent of retail determined between TechSoup and the donor partner. And it goes to fund TechSoup's operations so that we can provide these great webinars and content resources. And also goes to fund our product donation services around the globe. So um, yes, there are admin fees, and they are a very small percent of retail. Okay, great. Thank you. And Christy was wondering on the product end, are there donor databases available such as Donor Perfect or something like that? And we're having yes, we actually do have. Oh, sorry. Yes, we do actually have Donor Perfect available. Um, there are a number of donor platforms that you can find if you go to the. Um, TechSoup Get Products page. They are listed under the Browse by Donor Partner section, and you can also find them through um, the Browse by Task section. All right, great. Thank you, Laura. And Daria was wondering if you could show us what it looks like for a public library to log in, or just some more information on, on specific kind of information about libraries on, on TechSoup for Libraries. If Shala, do you think you could take that one? Sure. So let me just get back to my screen. So if we go to our home page um, and, and then click Get Products again. Oh, we're already there. On the right-hand side of the page, there's information for public libraries. I don't actually have um, access. I'm, my account's not signed up as a public library, so I'm not able to show you what the screen looks like for public libraries. Um, but there's two different um, programs for public libraries. There are um, public libraries that are 501c3 nonprofits and 
public libraries that are not 501c3 nonprofits. So for the public libraries that are 501c3 nonprofits, I think you will be eligible for a few more products. Um, I believe Adobe is one of them. But then for um, the non-501c3 products, you are eligible for um, the products listed on this page. Microsoft um, is the one that most, most libraries are really concerned about getting. Um, but definitely just browse through this section, um, serving public libraries with technology donations, and it um, will give you a lot, <coughs> um, a lot more detailed answers to your questions. Um, you can also call the Client Services Department with specific questions. Um, and if that answer isn't listed on our website, we can definitely um, speak with the person in charge of um, the library accounts, and she can bring more clarification for your answer. Okay, great. Thank you, Shala. Um, and Joan was wondering if there are any Spanish language, language versions, and I'm assuming she means of the products available. Laura, do you want to take that one? Um, yes, there are. Um, we actually wrote a blog post about this. Um, a while back, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know that Microsoft products are available in Spanish, um, and you you choose the language when you're in the requesting process. Um, there are a number of other products, especially our cloud offerings, that are um, compatible with Spanish, um, and I think we could probably send that link out um, in the notes. So. You can get more detailed information than my kind of bad memory. Yeah, I will, I'll definitely take a look and, and find that and send that out with the follow-up um, information that everybody will be receiving later today. Um, and Christy was wondering, are there Apple products available at all for any of these? Yes, there are Apple products available. Um, when you go to the, um, the I'm sorry, not Apple products, but we have products for Mac. I'm sorry. So we, Apple is not one of our donor partners, so you actually can't um, get Apple hardware from TechSoup. Um, but we do have products for Mac, so that will be listed on the product page. Um, I know a lot of um, Apple stores will refer nonprofits to TechSoup um, if you're looking. For, if you mention that you're a um, a nonprofit while you're shopping at their store. So definitely it's something that um, we're hopeful for one day. <laughs> we love Apple as well. <laughs> okay, great, thanks. And um, Scott was wondering about mobile fundraising. If there are any is there any resources for mobile fundraising? Are there any products related to that? Anything like that? Um, Laura, do you want to try to take that one? Sure. We do have some mobile fundraising or products in that category. Um, so we have payment services like Dharma and Sage that offer mobile payment um, or software to allow mobile payments. Um, and those can be accessed uh, if you go to the Get Products page under the Browse by Task section. If you click on Donors and Fundraising, the products available for that are there. We also have some great content resources about mobile fundraising, and we did a webinar on it a couple months ago. So I highly recommend that you um, check out those resources as well. And any of the resources that we're talking about, I'll, I'll make every attempt to include all of those in the uh, follow-up email that is going to be sent out. And if for some reason you don't see the information that you really wanted, um, you can feel free to respond to that, and we should be able to get back to you. Um, so we have another question asking if there are any cloud data hosting services ever hosted or offered through TechSoup. Um, Laura? Yes, right now we have NP Cloud available. It is in our TechSoup Limited program, which you can navigate to through the Get Products page. That is on um, the right-hand side under Special Programs, and also on the left-hand side under um, Donor Partners. Um, and again, that's NP Cloud is the name of that donor program. Yes, we also did a webinar um, a couple of weeks ago featuring MP some folks from MP Cloud, so I will also include that in the follow-up. Um, but that does include some helpful information, just not not only about MP, MP Cloud themselves, but 
about just um, cloud computing in general. So that's going to be really helpful information for you all. Um, so we have another question asking, what kind of hardware is available for donation? And Shala, you want to take that one? Sure. So um, we have Dell hardware, and then also um, the Refurbished Computer Initiative. You'll find hardware there. So in the Refurbished com Computer Initiative, you'll find desktops, laptops, monitors, printers. Um, for Dell, we have um, smartphones available now. We also have Mobile Beacon, which is. Um, 4G wireless access, and um, we have a few other companies such as Headsets.com, um, and then I think we have one other, Seagate. So we do definitely, um, oh yeah, we do definitely have hardware available. Um, I would definitely recommend browsing through the RCI section, the Refurbished Computer Initiative. Um, most people are looking for computers or server products. That's where you would find that. And um, again, the, um, on the right-hand side of our homepage under Special Products, re the Refurbished Computer Initiative is the first link. Okay, great. Thank you, Shala. And we also had another question about um, another question about admin fees. Um, just wanted to clarify if admin fees are a one-time fee, or do you have to pay them annually? Admin fees are just based on the product that you're requesting through TechSoup. So if you are getting QuickBooks this year, the 2012 or 13 version, whatever is available right now, um, you pay that admin fee one time for that version. Next year, if you would like to request the uh, New Year's version, then yes, we have an admin fee for, for that new version. But um, you know, for example, Fluid Surveys has a one year um, access fee. And so when you want to renew that one year fee, then you come back to TechSoup. And so some of our admin fees are annual if you want to continue to use that product into the next year, but it's not something we automatically charge. You would come back to TechSoup and request that new product. Okay, great. Thank you, Laura. And so when a product is purchased with software assurance, do you renew the software assurance through TechSoup or through the product? <laughs> or Shala? Okay. So for um, software assurance, um, all of your Microsoft licenses are volume licenses. So we don't actually ever give you your product key and information. All that information is held private between your organization and Microsoft. So you'll always go to Microsoft's Volume Licensing Service Center website to access your licenses. That's where you can um, manage your licenses and also um, upgrade through software assurance or in some cases downgrade also. Um, but you'll always reach out to Microsoft for that. Okay, great, thanks. And we do have several videos and um, archived webinars on the Microsoft Software Donation Program specifically. So, um, and I know that I already have included that on the list of, of resources to send out, so you should be able to take a look at that, and hopefully that will help as well. Um, we had another question, and I know we kind of already answered the do you have Apple products question. But there was also a question asking if um, any apps were available for iPhone or um, iPad through TechSoup or anything like that. And I know that we had um, an App It Up program that kind of highlighted some of these um, apps, but I don't know if anybody would like to answer on if we actually offer them. Laura? There is a free download section of our site um, that links to some really great resources um, and free downloads that we recommend and use sometimes ourselves. But there are no apps listed there currently. Um, the apps that we have focused on in our content are really apps that are offered by our donor partners, usually for free, and they're usually you know, letting you access that platform via your smartphone or your, your tablet. So thus far, we don't have any apps um, on our site for download, but it is something we're looking into for the future. We know that lots of nonprofits need these resources, and so we're trying to make those available to you. Okay, great. Thank you. 
And um, we do have somebody who is wondering if we offer printer cartridges or special paper products. Shala? Um, no, we do not answer or offer printer cartridges or um, any paper products. But definitely I would recommend going to our community page and going to the forums and asking people within the nonprofit community and also IT professionals if they know of any places where you can get those products at a discounted rate. Um, that's definitely a great question for our forums. Okay, great. Thank you, Shala. And this is a really interesting question. Um, we have somebody saying that they have libraries or they provide library, library services in Guatemala and Honduras, but neither country is listed. Um, and they were wondering how their country could become eligible. We are working every day to expand our global network. Um, unfortunately, I don't know offhand if Guatemala or Honduras are included in our expansion plans for fiscal year 13. But um, you know, we usually let people know through either the home page of our website when we add new international donor partners, um, or you can visit the TechSoupGlobal.org website to learn more about our global donation program. Um, I did want to add too that it's not just um, TechSoup.org serves or nonprofits and libraries in the United States and the territories. So if you have branches in the territories or um, you know, know of some organizations down there that need product donations, send them our way. Great. Thank you. And uh, Paul was wondering, with software, how long is the software good? So does it expire each year? So Shala, do you want to take that one? Sure. So once you purchase a license, it is yours forever. If it is noted on the product page that it is a one-year subscription, then your product will expire after one year. Um, but as far as like Microsoft, Adobe, QuickBooks, um, those licenses are yours for, forever and they do not expire. Awesome. Thanks. And Connie was wondering, she says, our organization has recently undergone changes, and when she was entering their organization's EIN, there were multiple listings under the EIN um, as they had multiple branches prior to the year. Um, so how do, they, how do they clean the list of names and have their EIN registered under their new name and not the branch location? So Shala, do you want to take that one? Sure. So um, if you want to change the name of your organization, just go to the My Account section, and under your Active Organization Profile, you can update the organization name. If some of those organizations or some of those branch locations are no longer um, valid locations, or if there are people from those locations that no longer work for your organization, it would be best to contact client services to straighten that out. Um, and we can help you remove people from the account and also update the organization name and um, the different branch locations and um, disqualify any of the branch locations that no longer exist. Okay, great. Thank you. And we did have another question about the Microsoft Software Assurance, um, but I, I'm not sure if we you would just need to actually go to Microsoft, but I'll answer it, or ask it anyway. Um, it's the renewal of Software Assurance if that is through Microsoft, when it, when it is time to renew the assurance, what would that renewal fee look like? And Shali, you want to take that one? Sure. Um, to renew your software assurance, you actually have to go to Microsoft directly. And honestly, it's probably going to be more expensive for you to renew your software assurance through them than just to get the newest version through TechSoup. Um, so I would recommend um, if you wanted to just get the latest product, it would probably be cheaper just to get it from TechSoup. But definitely you could reach out to Microsoft and upgrade through them as well. Okay, great. And we had a question that seems really specific to the library community, um, and it's if we offer any kind of microfilm or microfiche readers or scanners. Um, and I would expand that question into if we offer any products that are really specific to libraries themselves. Um, Laura, do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, we don't currently have any microfiche or, um, scanners or readers available on the site. Um, 
And generally, um, we don't have much library-specific equipment available um, other than, you know, computers and servers and those kind of things. Um, but I highly recommend you browse our RCI program um, for hardware that could be useful for your organization. Okay, great. And just kind of on that library end, and let me actually try to share my screen really quickly. If you give me one second. Okay. So if you go to the TechSoup website, um, even if we don't offer any products, we do offer some things that are specific to libraries. If you go to on the left, if you click on libraries and you go to the TechSoup for Libraries website, there are going to be some more information, the cookbooks um, on maintaining and supporting your computers, um, more information on webinars and more training resources and things like that. And one thing that I would really highly recommend is that you um, sign up for the TechSoup for Libraries newsletter. And that does go out every month with a lot of really, really great information. So that's something that would be really helpful, I think, for, for all of you. And then if you go back to the TechSoup website and you wanted, and I'm not sure if we already mentioned this, but to subscribe to By the Cup and New Product Donation Alert newsletters over here on the right-hand side of the page, that would also be really, really helpful. Take a look to see if there are any other questions that have come in. So um, Dixie was wondering, are there any partners, partnerships with EU reader manufacturers? And I don't believe so. Not currently, although it's definitely something we're looking into with the emergence of e-readers. Generally, we are constantly working with our existing donor partners and looking for new donor partners to bring more um, software and hardware and cloud offerings and all the technology you guys um, need to operate at your full potential. So I know that there have been some conversations going on specifically around e-readers, but we don't have anything available at this time. Um, the NPA, New Product Alert email that Kyla just pointed out on our home page, um, it goes out every two weeks, and we announce all new product donation programs and product upgrades that are available on the site in that. So it's a great tool and resource to keep updated on um, everything that's available to organizations through TechSoup. Okay, great. Thank you, Laura. And as I'm just kind of taking a look to see if any other questions have come in, and I do want to give it a, you know, a few more minutes to see if you all have any other questions. Um, while I'm waiting for that, I'll go ahead and point out um, where some additional information on our online, for our online events are, just so you know where to find that information. So if you go back to the TechSoup website, um, and Laura had already pointing, pointed out that in the Learning Center you can find information on webinars. But I also wanted to point out our somewhat new tech, tech events page, and that's found under Community on the left-hand side. And then if you, go, if you go under In Community and select Events, there will be an actual tech events website. And this not only show some of our webinars, but if we have upcoming tweet chats, if we have anything kind of happening um, that's tech event related, this, it will show up on this site. And it's somewhat hidden, so I did want to go ahead and point that out to you all. So let me go ahead and double check to see if there are any more questions that come in. And I'm not seeing any additional questions. Oh, we have one more. Um, Wendy was wondering, does TechSoup have any software to monitor a group of Windows PC in a classroom environment? Yes, we have Windows Multipoint Server available. Um, that's through the Microsoft Donation Program, and it allows you to monitor um, multiple desktops through one server application. Great, thank you, Lara. I really appreciate that. Um, and with that, you know, I, I think we can start kind of wrapping it up. We have just a couple of more minutes. Um, while I'm waiting to see if we do have any more questions, I'll go ahead and 
thank all of our presenters today. I want to thank both Lara and Shala for all of their really great insights, um, and thank Kevin for providing all the support on the back end. And I do, of course, want to thank our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk, for their really great um, support in providing our webinar platform and providing a really great donation program through TechSoup as well. Um, and if you all have any other questions after the webinar that you just happen to think of, um, you can email me, and I'll put my email address in here right now, and I can forward that on to the applicable people. And again, you will be receiving this webinar recording as well as any additional slides or resources hopefully today um, by the end of the day. So again, thank you, every, thank you everybody for your great participation today. We'll stay on the line for just a couple of more minutes to see if any other questions pop up. But if not, um, I hope everybody has a really great day. And just as a reminder, we do have some great social media channels. We do have a Facebook page, of course a Twitter account, because as I mentioned before, you can even talk about our webinars and, and tech events on using our TechSoup hashtag. But we do also have a Twitter account. Um, we also have a YouTube page. And so if you just go to YouTube and search for TechSoup, you'll be able to find almost all of our archived webinars, some of our how-to videos, and a lot of our digital storytelling videos from our annual digital storytelling challenge. Um, so just don't forget to check all of that out. And Donna was wondering if we could talk a little bit more about what is available for faith-based organizations, or about just remind us again about where to go for that information. Shelley, you want to take that one? Okay, so um, for faith-based organizations, um, we um, let's see. If you go to the faith-based page on our website, it will go over which donation programs are available to your organization. There are dozens of donation pr programs available to faith-based and religious religious organizations. If your organization does have a secular community outreach program that does not discriminate, that does that um, offers service to anyone in the community regardless of their religious orientation, I definitely encourage you to go to the faith-based page. And on the right-hand side of the page, you can um, get the secular clarification survey. That's where you'll answer some more information about um, the services, your, the secular services your organization provides. Um, and you can definitely um, increase your eligibility if you have secular donations or secular programs for your, orga your faith-based organization. Um, but definitely check out the faith-based page, um, and that will really go into spe spe sorry, specific detail um, as to what faith-based can, or what TechSoup can offer your faith-based organization. Great. Thank you, Shala. And um, I, just, I did just want to also remind you that when you leave the webinar today, you will be getting these survey pop up on your machine. And if you could just take a couple of minutes to answer the survey, it really does help us in um, developing and improving our webinar holdings. And if for some reason it does not pop up, it will also be a link to it will also be included in the follow up email. And so with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and close up. So I do want to thank everybody for attending today and for all the really great questions. This is a lot of really great back and forth um, with our community, which is what we really appreciate. And we do want to emphasize how much we do appreciate you guys. So again, if you have any additional questions after the fact, feel free to email me and I will forward those on. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.